My braid is flashing first. Jason and I were really good buddies from college. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Outside of the Box. I feel like I've been on a roll with, with interviewing a lot of the rookie teams from last season, and I'm very excited about this one because this is one of my favorite new designs. Um, I am here with Greg of Switchback. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Absolutely. Um, so very unique design um i mean it's 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 so it's such a, a thing with with battle bots is you know obviously when you're coming into it you want to come up with something that's unique and different because then that that helps you stand out but then you're also coming in with something that isn't necessarily like well tested because it's not a design that other people have done so you don't really know for sure how it's going to work in actual matches um what was the the idea behind coming up with this design and and what were you you know obviously winning the the you know the whole the whole thing would have been good but i mean like what yeah. were you hoping to see with you know with going with this design yeah so um you know switch back so the Coming into BattleBots as a rookie, there's there's several avenues to this. So first of all, you have to do something that is different to stand out. Um, to get accepted to the show, you have to do something that stands out, right? Um, nobody is going to get accepted to the show at this point with a variant on one of the established metas. So um, we knew we had to do something different. Um, we actually had zeroed in on two concepts that we liked, something different. Um, and... Um, Switchback is the one that we were felt more confident in executing in the kind of time that we have. But yeah, the, the idea is I, I've always liked the idea of dual threat attacks. Um, uh, just it gives you a little bit more flexibility. And I think that that's kind of how the sport is evolving, where if you look at a lot of the success of, you know, Sawblaze and, you know, Whiplash and and Scorpios and like a lot of these kind of dual threat robots, um, they're doing really well uh, because they, they're bringing something more to the table than just, I'm going to point the face of my robot at you and just hit you. Um, and so we wanted to kind of go down that road. Uh, if we had been able to build a meta robot, our robot probably would have would have looked a lot like Copperhead, Riptide, like that were version of the drum traditional kind of drum meta um but putting a drum on an arm kind of we kind of that was our our take on it um i'd say the one thing that was really confusing to people when we first announced what we were doing was the fact that it was not a hammer drum which is what everybody expected coming out of Sawblaze and scorpios where they come in and they just hit people with it to get the extra energy on where ours was articulating so our whole concept was about every robot on the has a spot they don't want you to touch. So you armor down will hit you up top. You armor up top will hit you down. Um, come from in the back will hit you over the back. Like it's it was to try to give us some hit, take huge, hit them from the bottom. Like people don't hit huge as bottom, right? Like it's those types of things. We thought that would bring an interesting dynamic. Um, it worked kind of, uh, <laughs> but uh, we learned quite a bit. And I think that that was the, Coming in, we knew year one, our goal was go in, win one, try to win one fight, learn everything that we possibly can so we could take all the, the learning and experience and then drive that into a second year or a V2 iteration. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it definitely was a pretty exciting season. It, it had its ups and downs for sure. Um, what I, what I thought was interesting, like you never know what you're going to get in that first draw, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you, you, you know, ideally want something that is going to, you're going to be able to do well against mm -hmm. rough is kind of a tank. Um, they're very hard to break and they're very good at getting under robots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if I was looking at that, I would have said, that probably wasn't the matchup that you wanted um, just because of the <laughs> fact that it's hard to, to do damage to them. It um, wasn't the was... matchup that we didn't want though. Um, I'd rather have Gruff than Tombstone in my first fight, right? Um, Switchback's Achilles heel 
uh, robot, we always fear the horizontals um, because of the leverage on the arm. So like a really, really hard hit horizontally, that's what we were fearing going into the season. So we didn't actually see any horizontals. I know if I know that some of the producers watch this show, you know, we're going to, you know, I, I bet we would see a horizontal the next season now. Um, <laughs> but, but um, it's, yeah, Gruff wasn't bad for us. Um, the thing that would bummed us out about Gruff, um, first of all, it is a tank. Sam and the team are great. They know exactly what they're doing. Um, when we went into the first fight, our goal was to like not have something dumb kill us. And in the end, something dumb killed us. And that was really unfortunate. But it also means we didn't have to do a complete rebuild. We literally were like, oh, look, that wire is broken. Splice it. And now the robot works again. So from that perspective, it was a good introduction. But yeah, it's so it wasn't the best fight for us. It wasn't the worst. But I mean, it was a pretty fair, solid showing that, that we were that we were dealt in that first one. So is that what was, because, you know, obviously like from a, a fan perspective, unless you see, you know, interviews or things like that, you don't know, but I mean, obviously you were flipped over and you weren't able to self, right? Is that kind yep. of what happened there? Yeah. So the first fight was one of the, so, okay. A couple, couple things on the first fight. So first of all, um, view as a driver, totally different than view as a, um, like as a fan or view on the show. Um, so first of all, adrenaline's pumping. You're coming out of the show. You have fans. Like I'm, I'm wearing headphones, like trying to do everything I can to keep myself calm. Um, I've been in the driver's box for like first robotics events going on 20 years now. So um, I'm, I'm used to that part of it, right? But this was something very different. And the other thing that we learned was that, you know, the driver boxes kind of tip in, which means that the, the right hand side. So if you're, if you're on the blue side or you're on the left side, if you get drawn into the right side corner, you can see nothing. Like you have to like put your face on the glass or back up because the other drivers are blocking that area. So there's these blind corners and Sam knows this. And so he drew us into that corner and was just pummeling us against the wall. And in the process of that, um, we had a wire from one of, one of our brushless motors, just one phase wire that was routed in the wrong channel. Like we had all these wire channels of where everything went. For some reason it was routed in this wrong spot and the frame twisted just enough to like shear this one wire. So the arm stopped working immediately whenever that hit, we don't know exactly when that happened. But the weapon kept spinning, and then ultimately we came in, got a big hit, but then we kind of flew ourselves backwards, and the minute we were upside down, the, the fight was over. Um, we also did not have that robot set up right for the ground game for that. Um, we were running wedgelets on the back instead of wedgelets on the front. Um, there was, it, it was, there was a lot of preparation that was not ideal for us, but, you know, it was our first fight. And like I said, our goal was to win one of the whole season. So I wasn't sweating it and we didn't have to like, you know, go dig through the dust pan to like put the robot back together, which was a something I was concerned with too. So. Yeah. Um, so the, the next match, um, I was really sad that this wasn't aired for like a number of reasons because you know you, yeah. you got a win and like not only that but like I love Slamo. I have said repeatedly yeah. on this show I love that robot. I think the fact that it can suplex other robots is one of the best things ever that I have seen. Mm -hmm. um, you know they tried to do that to you, uh, but I you know I, I talked to to Craig Danby about this as well, and I think just. With Switchback having such a unique design, um, it, it was probably difficult for him to really get that grab that he wanted on you to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that that match was also interesting because both robots seem to have some mobility issues throughout the match, but you were able to kind of persevere through that and get that KO in that match. Mm -hmm. So kind of, you know, take me through what you remember about that one. Yeah, so, um, it, you know, it was great to get the first win. Um, so Craig and the Slamo team um, and us were pit neighbors the whole event. So, like, we were right next to each other. We were hanging out. Um, there's some 
there's some history there. I, I don't actually know if people know this. So um, I went to college. There's three of us who went to college together. It was myself, Mike Jeffries from Bombshell, and Leanne all went to school together at RIT. So um, a lot of, though Bombshell is no longer competing, some of the folks who were on Bombshell are on Slamo. And so there was a little bit of like, hey, let's you know pit together, do that type of thing. Because while I knew some builders on a lot of other teams, I didn't have the network of builders that you meet your first season. So we were hanging out. Um, that first fight, I, you know, what was funny was that we made the joke, what happens if we go up against each other? We were in the battery tent. Like, we knew how wide each other was. We were asking that question, like, where were these forks grabbed? The weight distribution on switchback is a little bit strange because of how heavy that drum is. So we're effectively you're almost like 40% of the robot weight is moving. And so it's real awkward, like to get any sort of grip. If you grip the drum, the bass will probably hold it down. If you grip the, the bass, you've got this huge mass that moves around. So we thought that was gonna be a little bit tough. Um, ultimately though, you know, the, this is where the drivetrain problems for us, we started realizing that we had made a huge design mistake and that was going to plague us the rest of the season. Um, but we were happy with that match that the drum kept spinning. I mean, the drum kept spinning basically in every single match that we fought. So like our weapon did not die. Um, and then we got, um, we got a really good hit on the corner panel of, uh, of uh, Slamo and ended up bending in, kind of collapsing the front part of their drivetrain. Uh, I actually have it. If, if, um, so this whole, this is like the drive pod of Slamo, um, And like we took their very thick, uh, the way they do their panel graphs, we actually bent this whole thing in and it collapsed and jammed up their whole drivetrain, which led to the, the KO. So that's my, one of my nice little souvenirs from the season. But uh, yeah, it was good to have a win, but it was obvious in that one that we were gonna have drivetrain issues the rest of the season. Um, but um, yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it, it's unfortunate. I mean, I always say a win is a win. Obviously, you know, there's certain wins that are more satisfying than others. But, you know, as a as a rookie bod to kind of get that first win, I'm sure that it still, you know, felt good. Oh, it, I mean, that felt fantastic. I mean, we, you know, we were, our team is very goal oriented. So when we said we wanted to go to BattleBots and do one win, the minute we did that, we were like, yeah, one win. Um, we know that that also put us at one and one at that point in the thing. And so the way it was shaking out was that like two and ones would make the round of 32. So we weren't even sure at that point if we were going to get a third fight. Um, so the one and ones all got third fights. So we were just happy to get another fight. Um, and so it kind of put us in a position of saying like, well, maybe we're on an upward trajectory. Gruff didn't go the way that we wanted to. Slamo uh, went well. So like maybe we're moving in a good direction so yeah it didn't always did not work out that way but it, <laughs> no because because of course you ended up you know in your third match you so you know everybody talks about that they have a tombstone plan even though that's not something everybody says but i think everybody has to have a huge plan as well because they're just such a different kind of robot and you have to really think about how you're going to fight them um you know and that's who you ended up fighting um mm -hmm. was huge and not only fighting them but fighting them in a situation where they were also one and one and I'm sure knowing Jonathan Schultz that he was highly motivated to get that win because you know it meant so much for him to have a positive season mm -hmm. um and I mean you you really did well against them to, you know, to a point, obviously once it got to the point where your weapon got damaged, that's, you know, th then there, there wasn't much that you could do from there. But I mean, up to that point, I mean, I really thought that you were doing well against them. Yeah. So, so something I don't know if ever, if people know um, is that we called huge out. Um, so that fight was, uh was like, we, we literally called them out. So, the the I know I've watched your show and you like to ask builders like oh who's the fight you want so we went into the season like thinking oh switchback would be really cool to fight huge because we can reach them we have like sketches in our CAD of like like 
sketched out huge, like the size of their wheels, like where they are trying to make sure when we were doing our arm geometry, we're like, we need to make sure we can hit the bottom of huge. Like there was a whole like big part of it. We put it in our application video. We put it in our producer thing. I mean, Jonathan knew this from the beginning. Like, so like, I mean, he also ended up fighting like, so he ended up fighting Riptide and us. Did he get all rookies this year? Um, I can't remember what his third fight was. In I don't qualifying. remember off the top of my head. I did. I obviously I interviewed him, but I don't remember. Like, <laughs> yeah, he, so he many but uh, yeah. So, you know, huge was one of those things. So interjecting about drivetrain for a second, um, because it's going to come up in every one of the fights from this point forward. So with switchback, one of the challenges of a dual threat robot is your weight distribution. If you, normal robot, if you're just a, ver, a four wheel vert or you're a traditional like hammer bot or you're something that's just one mechanism, you are your drivetrain, your armor and your weapon. That's it, like divide them however you think you need to divide them. With ours, we have the drivetrain, the armor, the arm gearbox and the arm weapon. So we have this extra subsystem and that gearbox in order to survive, has to be able to take, you know, a lot of abuse. So that 30 pounds has to come from somewhere. Um, our plan was, and this was, you know, I, um, so I run a robotics company. We have all sorts of sourcing and fun technology and all sorts of stuff that we were tapping into. And what ends up happening is one of the ways we were trying to save weight is to go low reduction on our gearbox, on our drivetrain. So instead of using a brushless motor that's like 400 to 800 kV, which is what everybody uses, and putting it through a gearbox to drop the RPM to get yourself on the right side of the power curve, we're like, let's be clever. We custom wound all of our motors for switchback this past year, and we wound a low kV motor, so like a 50 kV motor. Um, and so for your viewers, KV is a thousand RPM per volt. So um, you multiply 50 by, you know, if you're 12 S that's like 48 volts. So you're like multiply out. So what we did was we effectively went from the motor single chain to our wheels. And so by getting rid of the gearbox requirement, we were like, okay, that's where the weight for the arm is going to come from. The problem with that is that the lower the, the kV of the motor, the higher the internal resistance of the motor. And the higher internal resistance means in order to get the same power out of that motor, your current draw is way, way higher. Well, the issue with that is balancing, right? So we, in order to get power out of the drivetrain, we need to be at a high current. Well, in order to be at a high current, now you're touching the limits of the motor controllers we were using in the drivetrain. And so we were caught in this window the whole season of too much current, we blow up the motor controller, not enough current, and the robot appears sluggish because the gearing was just wrong on the drivetrain. So we tweet, we, every match we mess with it, we mess with the software side of it, we messed with the, the uh, we we had some extra sprockets and we were playing with that, whatever we could get chain reduction in there. But it just, it just, there was not much we could do. So back to the huge fight for a second. Um, that fight was the last fight of the whole night of like, it was one of the, the order that it plays on TV is not always the order they shoot it in, but that was the last fight of the last day of fight nights. And so it was like one of the last fights. And we went into the test box to try to do our function test. And I uh, blew up a drivetrain. Like before our drivetrain was not right before we even put it in the box. And we unfortunately had this situation presented to us, which was put the robot in the box, gimpy and like kind of already pre-damaged or don't fight at all. And so we were like, well, it's the, like, might as well do it. Um, so we went and did that. So our drivetrain was not right from the beginning. And, but we felt good. I've gotten a lot of messages on this fight specifically that um, people think that, because we, we did damage Huge's drivetrain, that if we've been able to drive away from them, they could have been counted out. Um, we definitely did damage to Huge, but um, it was a fun fight for us. Like I've, 
happy to like for Jonathan to like rip switch back apart. That was great. Um, I gave Jonathan his his Facebook profile photo. He's got a really awesome photo of him with like him like photo through the hole of the gash in switchback armor. Uh, if you ever if you go stalk him on social media, you'll see it's like switchbacks robot that you're like seeing him through. Um, but no, it's, it was a great fight, and we did a call out on huge, and we were happy to fight them. I, I do see I, I brought other things, so like so this is huge's bottom panel. So we hit their bottom where most people won't hit. And we got pretty far through their like indestructible armor. And then the thing that this is like my prized thing I got was I got one of Huge's eyes. So we actually do hit their eye in that episode, bend it. And so that's like, this is a good one. And so the team signed it and it's pretty good. So that was huge. Um, you know, it wasn't the end of the world, right? Going out of fight night, going one and two as a rookie and looking at it and say, you know, had the wire not kind of undone on Gruff, that fight might have gone the other way. Probably not, but it could have gone the other way. Had our drivetrain been a little bit better, we would have done better against Huge. Maybe that could have gone the other way. We didn't feel that at that point that we failed, right? We had a losing record, but we didn't feel like we failed. And that was, that was a big thing from like a sense of accomplishment perspective for our team that we felt all right. So. Yeah. I, I think you said that perfectly. Um, now, it, you know, interesting that after that, I mean, uh, uh, there are some fans that don't realize that the, you know, the Sin City Slugfest and champions and everything that's happening right now, that that wasn't, a like later you know it's a different event but it it happened like essentially concurrently and like right immediately after mm -hmm. everything that was going on during the regular season um so you didn't have a lot of time to you know just readjust and, and get into that um now in the in the scorpios bracket you know that's what you ended up in um which i will tell you that scorpios did not want to fight you <laughs> I wa I wa I watched their interview episode, their post <laughs> thing, and I knew that. And, and um, Zach and I, you know, we joked about it. I mean, there were. I, I will. I will say the one thing that I'm really proud of about the switchback design, and, and regardless of how effective it was in the battle box, it definitely made a lot of builders stop and like come talk to us and try to think about what they were going to do for that that same like. We don't know how to armor. And like even, even in fights after we lost, we would have conversations. Everyone holds their cards close to the chest, but immediately when the match is over, you're like best friends. And so there was a lot of like, we didn't know how to set up. We didn't know which armor to put on. We didn't know like how to defend it. And I love that we were like making people think about it. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, now I'm I'm actually really interested to get your take on the lucky match because sure. you know, again, you know, fan perspective, you know, we're seeing something differently, and I have no like real deep knowledge of robotics to see a robot get hit and be like, okay, yeah, I know what happened there. You know, I I and I didn't know what happened there. Like you hit them, and I mean, it was a good hit, but it wasn't like you know create a crazy hit where you're like oh my gosh that robot's dead and they just stopped yeah. um so you know it, i mean that shows the power of your weapon that you were able to do that and just got that hit on the right spot so kind of tell me like from your end of things what what happened there in that match so yeah so we um with lucky um we had a lot of time before the tunnel where we were hanging out back stage like there was a delay or i don't remember if it was like a lithium battery fire or which fight it was but we were back there for like a really long time and so we got a good look at what armor configuration they were running gave enough time to think they they have some heavy armor but they ran this like light bar on the on the side that wasn't like full encompassing to the wheels and so we felt like if we could get a side or back corner hit that we could kind of collapse that in on itself. And that's actually the hit that we got. It was like, now I, I think it was very lucky that we like, very lucky that we got this hit on lucky. I will not claim that it is driver skill. I will not claim that it is, it's what we were going for, but 
there was a moment where we hit them and they started smoking that I remember like, oh my gosh, we actually hit them where we were trying to hit them. And so that was, that was a thing. Um, the other thing about that, so that, so one of the other things is that um, they had broken their last like lifter tip. And so they were not running any sort of like lifter tip. They had kind of left it as the swing. Um, and so that was kind of a thing that was, that was, we knew we weren't going to get thrown into the air. So there was a little bit less nervousness from us knowing that they didn't have that lifter tip on them, but yeah, we got this crazy hit on them and see, I, I, I have lots of toys. So, so this is Lucky's wheel. And, um, for, for the bot builders who are like really into it, these are uh, robo uh, robo core wheels. These are the ones that the Brazilians make. Um, so we completely shattered the inside of this hub of this wheel. This wheel is actually like split in two. And so they, we took, they have a titanium axle that went through here and we hit this wheel perfectly that we all, we split the core of this whole wheel and jammed the whole back of it, just like back into the, the gearbox of the, the thing and it just jammed up their whole gearbox. And that was it. So it was, like I said, a lot of power switchback definitely packs a punch. Um, it's a very small robot, but we are running um, pretty powerful weapon motors and we have a huge, you know, the limit of weapon weight is 80 pounds. Most kinetic energy weapons are in the like 40, 50 ish range on the high end. There's very few teams that run to the 80 pound limit. Um, I think that, You've got some of the big ones like Deep Six, um, Pardon My French runs really heavy. And, you know, some of the other drum bots, the Minotaurs and things run really heavy. But we are, we have a pretty powerful dual uh, weapon motor set up. And that drum is heavy that it, we know it hits hard when it hits. And so I think that Lucky was just a, we got that perfectly lucky shot. Um, I mean, obviously, like we hit them and then like half of our drivetrain was dead again. So it was, I think that we were fortunate and that we could kind of like, they were totally stopped and smoking and we were like crab walking, moving around a little bit because I was thinking that like, it could have very easily gone like simultaneous KO. Um, but yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of lucky hit in that one, but uh, we were pretty happy with that in general. Yes. Um, and, and I thought like, I thought it was just pure irony though, because, you know, with the robot's name is lucky and that was very unlucky for them to, to be hit in that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was great to get that win. Um, of course though, the, the next round, you got a very highly motivated Al Kindle and blacksmith. Um, I mean, like, I, I, I really, I have to give it to you because you really, like, did your best to, to get, it was just punishment. Like, yeah. he just was, he was relentless. Yeah, he was, he was on us from the second that match started and never stopped. And I, I give him total props for it. I mean, I, so perspective for me on fights, I never want to let a fight go to the judges regardless. I, um, like, I am happy to sit under Huge's weapon and get pummeled because I'm still trying to hit them and do damage. Like I want to get KO'd or I want to KO somebody. I don't want it to ever go to the judges. And so, and I also believe that we walked into BattleBox, like even as a rookie, we had two full robots, identical twins. Plus we had parts to build a third and part of a fourth. So I felt that it didn't matter. Wreck it, do whatever, try to do our best. The parts don't matter. I'm not worried about the money that, oh, we're going to blow up. It doesn't matter. Like, just go out there and fight. So we we knew that one was as close to impossible as to win as any, any of any of the fights we went to the whole season. And that is not to discount any of the fights. We, we knew that blacksmith fight was something was going to have to go really bad for them for us to have a really good shot. We just wanted to try some stuff um you know it didn't go our way we we did um in retrospect we made a strategic operator mistake with switchback in some of our fights this year 
Um, I know I saw it in a lot of the YouTube comments and on, on Reddit when people talk about our fights that how come they're not doing the thing? And um, and that's right, we were not. We uh, when we got pushed up against the wall, um, what we were doing is we were shutting our our weapon down because we were trying not to just chew on that. But what would happen is we would put our weapon would down, our, our weapon would stop, and then we would get under the spike strip with our weapon, and we wouldn't be able to go up and over because we were under the spike strip. And so we should have been doing, and this is all 20, like, I don't know, Monday, Monday morning quarterback stuff. Um, we should have been, as we approached the wall, going up with our arm almost immediately to make sure that it was above the spike strip so that we could come back over the top. But that was like a, Hey, watch the tape afterwards and learn uh, some of those flight dynamics that you just don't know. But yeah, I mean, you know, Al is a great driver. The new version of blacksmith, it hits really hard. And he's also kind of a surgeon when it comes to like when exactly to hit, when his robots lined up in the exact right spot. And he did some, like, he knocked, he got both of our arm chains. Uh, Huge got one of them. They didn't get both of them. Um, we can, we can articulate the arm with just one chain. We don't need both of them. But so he got both of them, which killed our arm. Our drivetrain still sucked. It was the, still the same awful drivetrain we had all season. And then, and then the end was just like, literally our wedgelets went down and just took our wheels off the ground. It was like our equivalent to doing you know, the thing that, you know, where like you're up on the top where you just can't move. And so that was the end. I was happy. Like, I, I think some people saw it on the show, but like I hadn't even been counted out yet. And I was like, yeah, all right, go ahead, Al. Like we, we were tired. We had been in Vegas for two weeks. We were just mentally exhausted, a little slap happy. And, you know, at some point, you know, I'm disappointed. We didn't get to go face blood sport or, go face Scorpios. But at the same time, I was just happy to have a fight that lasted more than, you know, 20 seconds. And I don't know, that was it. And concluded our rookie season. So it was, it's fun. Yeah, it, it looked fun. And, and sometimes, I mean, you know, like I, I hear this repeatedly, even if you don't win a fight, there are still some fights that are just good fights and like enjoyable to be a part of. And, you know, it, it doesn't, it, it's, it's still, you learn things from it and you can, mm -hmm. you know, take that with you moving forward. Yep. Yeah. I mean, definitely everything, every fight that we had, you know, we, we broke down all the fights. We've kind of have a list as we worked on the design of switchback Two there was a lot of these like diversity of situations that we were in and how to deal with it. Um, I mean, our number one priority was fix the drivetrain um, for, for the new version. We want to make sure that our drivetrain is totally solid and then, you know, expand upon the things that work and change the stuff that didn't work. So um, that's, you know, that's kind of where we were. So we were happy with what we did. Um, I mean, obviously, like, I wish we had a run like Glitch, right? But, you know, nobody has a run like Glitch. So um, it's, we, we were happy. Like, it, there's no, uh, no hard feelings on our side about how we did during the season. Um, but, yeah, I'm just appreciative just to be on the, you know, be in the big stage and in the box playing with everybody. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, you you know I'm going to ask you, but like you you said you know you you got huge out of the way. Now that you've got huge out of the way, who do you want to fight? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask this question on this show. I always I, do. I know, and I pulled I pulled some of the folks. We don't see it's it's kind of funny. It's huge was the one that was always in our mind. Um, <laughs> we like fighting different robots. Um, I can't, I'm not ready to reveal everything about version two of Switchback. So there's some things here as well. Um, I would, I mean, I'd love to fight Mammoth. I think that fighting other big robots that are gangly uh, are a little different. Um, those, I, I grew up in Baltimore. So also fighting, you know, hometown, uh, a Baltimore team would be fun. Um, I would love to go up against Valkyrie. Um, you know, that's some of that's just a little bit of like, you know, I know Leanne for so well and, you know, you know, just, you know, I like that type of stuff fighting against friends, but I, I think it, it's, 
the challenge of BattleBox is the ability to prepare for the unprepared. So we would be happy to fight anybody. And I think that in or this is the year where Switchback, um, our next appearance on BattleBots, we are trying to transition our mindset from being a, hey, let's go try to win one fight and learn all we can to being a competitive machine. And so in order to be a competitive machine to try to make a deep run in the tournament, um, we need to fight, be able to go up against any robot in the field. And so that's, I'm, we'll take whoever. But since I know that they didn't want to fight me, I'm just going to call, call Scorpios out. Like, let's go fight Scorpios. And, and that's that's perfect because um, Zach and Diana are two of the most competitive people that I know. Um, so I, I am quite sure that they would be completely up for that challenge. Sure. Yeah. And and they they have beaten some huge competitors and some really good robots. And so that would be a challenge. Um, any way you slice it. But I, I want to I want to challenge ourselves. I I want to go up. I don't want to just go up against robots that I think that we can win. I want to go up against robots that are going to make us prove how good we think the new version of the robot is. Um, because that's what we want, you know, a strength of schedule. We want a good one, right? Like we, um, so that's, I don't know. That's, I don't know, that's my list. I, I would be happy to fight anybody um, because it's, it's a blast. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm also curious to, to get your perspective, like now knowing how much of a background you have in, you know, first robotics and obviously there's been a lot of other rookie teams coming in. I mean, I think every year more and more, there's more teams applying for battle bots, mm -hmm. um, you know, for you, what do you think are like the most important fundamentals for people who are just trying to get into building a robot to, you know, to understand and learn, you know, I know I, I've constantly heard, you know, if you're going to build a bot, it's best to build a smaller version yep. of a robot before you decide, okay, I'm just going to build a 250 pound robot without having anything prior. Yep. I, I totally agree with that advice. I didn't follow that advice, but I totally <laughs> agree with that advice. Um, so I guess there's one thing people, I don't know if most people don't know this, but I had a, I had a heavyweight 15 years ago that I fought at a non-televised BattleBots event called R3. Um, and that's that was my first combat robot was also a heavyweight back then. So I have not learned anything about a lesson about building a small one before you build a big one. Um, you know, first robotics um, competition, those robots are 120 pounds, 150 fully loaded. Um, so they're, they're not in a different scale in terms of like size and weight. Obviously those robots are built for their task-based playing a sport. Um, they're a lot more sensor mechanism intensive than a battle bot is actually relatively simple compared to a first robot. Obviously you have different problems in terms of um, power density is a totally different thing. There's no armor on first robots. I mean, on FRC robots, we, we put bumpers around the outside, you know, pool noodles wrapped in fabric. It's a very different challenge, but building at that scale is pretty comfortable. And there are a lot of building techniques that translate pretty well, but building battle bots is expensive. Um, I mean, effectively, you know, I've chatted with this a whole bunch this year, but the cost to do a battle bot is about the same as the cost to run an entire FRC program. Um, so you're, you're into the like 30 to $40,000 to do this correctly. And so to come in with a new design with something that's unproven, you have to be prepared, very confident in your design, your, your engineering skills and your ability to execute it because you're betting a huge amount of money to do it. And um, not that this should play into it, but it is also a TV show. So if you fail and you fail catastrophically, you fail very publicly also. Um, and so it, those are the things where I think that building a small robot, um, proving the design, learning that type of stuff is probably a good thing for most people. But I've also been building big robots with FRC robots for 22 years now. So I feel comfortable at that size scale. And then we were very fortunate enough to have a good sponsor roster, even our rookie year 
to help us cover the costs of competing. So that's, I don't know, our story is maybe a little bit different than the average person who's just like, I want to do that. And then, you know, straps a lawnmower to an RC car and says, let's go into the battle box. But yeah, you know, I also am not hating on that either. Right. I mean, it's, this is a sport, right. And it's supposed to be fun. And I, I don't know, it's, go for it. Yeah, it really depends on what you want to get out of it. Because I know, you know, some competitors do it more for the the fun aspect, and some are more competitive. Um, and there's really nothing wrong with either. I mean, you can you can do it from whatever perspective is is right for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and for us, it was, this is something different than what we normally do. We live and breathe the first universe of, of kind of that whole universe, right? I mean, so um, my company, Rev Robotics, like we build the parts and hardware, electronics and control systems, mechanical parts that every single first team that participates in First Tech Challenge or First Robotics Competition uses for their robots, right? We are core to that. And then in addition, all of our team members have mentored teams. We've been competitors in that for forever. Um, so when you do first for so long, there's these like, mental models that you build up on, oh, well, this is probably good enough. You're not doing analysis of every gearbox, every joint, everything. And so we were looking for something different. So I, you know, I have a robot business, you know, I volunteer with robots after, you know, after work. So why not do another robot competition also to, as a break from those other two robot things. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, I don't know. It was just different for us. Uh, and that's, that's kind of why we wanted to try it. Uh, th there is a side tangent to that where I was on a team that we were going to apply for season three that we didn't, we didn't end up finishing. We, we designed robots and we were going to go application. The problem was that BattleBots used to film in April and that's when the first world championship is. And so two weeks of my time in April is impossible, but because of COVID they moved the schedule to filming in the fall. And so if BattleBots still filmed in April, Switchback would never have existed. So it was kind of that little opening of schools are still shut down, COVID is a thing. And so everything's a little bit slower in our universe. It films in the fall. This is the opportunity to do this. And so we said, let's do it. And we had a good time. So we were trying to do it again. Um, and we'll uh, see where that goes. But uh, yeah, we're trying to transition from being learners to maybe being a little bit more competitive. But I also know that the the pathway to the giant nut is a it's a very steep one, and there's as much luck involved as anything else. And that's so you know, you, if you ran the tournament a dozen times, you'd probably have six different nut winners based on the chaos factor of battle bots. Yeah. So. You never know what's going to happen in, in any given match. Um, but yeah, I mean, like it, it's a good point though, about like that, that learning process and transitioning, because I mean, I always, I always like to bring up Ribot as an example of, you know, a bot that's been around for a while and, you know, when they first started, I don't think that anybody would have looked at the robot and said, they are a giant nut contender, um, but they quickly, you know, adapted and used versatility as a way to get there. And, mm. you know, now they're definitely, uh, you know, obviously being in the, the Golden Bolt tournament, a great robot. So, I mm -hmm. mean, that I think that goes to show, though, that a robot that has some level of versatility, and I think that Switchback does because of the way that it operates, um, mm -hmm. can really get you places. So yeah, and and we we will learn. Um, we the new version of Switchback, which I, I promised all the people watching this, we we will not keep it under wraps forever. But um, we have some different weapon configurations. We've redone some things, the stylizing and the way that our the way it's built and the armor configurations there's a lot of different things going on um it's still the base concept is the same but it is very different but yeah so so we're trying to still be versatile we're still trying to be that you know swiss army knife in the box um we're not like unbolting you know we're not we're not doing the uh 
the Mike Jeffries thing where like the robot's going to go from a hammer to a saw to a vertical to, or the ribot from undercutter to, to vert. But um, we, we're going to try to try to keep evolving it. And, you know, we, we also, we're engineers, you know, most of our team is engineers and we want to, we want to keep designing and trying new things. So showing up every year with exactly the same thing where you're in maintenance mode is not as fun for us. I mean, we like the, you know, I'd say half the enjoyment is the design challenge. And then the other half of it, you know, it's almost like building it or like, like baking a cake and then going to the competition is like eating the cake. So there's enjoyment on both sides of that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, very exciting. Um, you know, I, I will definitely be on the lookout to see when, when information comes out and see what things are to come for switchback. Um, but yeah, um, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, obviously there's, there's a lot of anticipation for the next season. So, um, you know, kind of see when, when all of that information comes out, but mm -hmm. I appreciate you coming on the show and talking about all of this, um, you know, exciting to kind of recount the way things went down and things to come. So thank you for joining me. Oh yeah. I'm happy, happy to do it. I, I love talking about this stuff. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, one of the side parts to this is just getting more people interested in the stuff that happens behind the show and beyond this, um, and I, so I think it's great. And I think that shows like yours are, you know, great ways for fans of the show to engage in different ways. And I, so happy, to, happy to do it. Happy to come back. And, you know, we're, uh, we just, we want to have, you know, it's going to be a fun, fun year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, as, as I always say, for everybody watching the show, make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, engage, all of that good stuff um, so that I can keep doing more stuff like this and giving you the content that you want. Um, and I don't think I've actually mentioned it on the show, but by the way, I have what? Yeah, merch. I have merch. So <laughs> buy, buy some shirts, support combat robotics. If I sell anything, it's going to go directly back into supporting the teams. So um, thank you so much. And we'll see you next time on the show.